Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm talking about how you can stimulate your vagus nerve to calm your anxiety. The vagus nerve is called a cranial nerve because it starts in your brain. And this is in contrast to your peripheral nerves that start in your spinal cord and then move out to the periphery of your body to control your body movements. The vagus nerve travels out of your head and it joins up with your carotid arteries and your jugular vein, then goes down into your chest and then down into your abdomen. And along that path, it sends out branches to control your vocal cords and your internal organs of your chest and your abdomen. I talked about how the vagus nerve is the communication vehicle for your gut bacteria to communicate with your brain. If you didn't see that video, you can watch it after this one. But another important influence of this nerve is on the heart. And this is one of the biggest ways that it can reduce your anxiety. Here's a quick explanation of how this works. You can think of your nerves as falling into two groups. One group that controls the automatic functions of your internal organs and the group that controls your voluntary functions like your muscle movement. The nerves that automatically control your organs are part of the autonomic nervous system. The voluntary nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. Within the autonomic nervous system, you have a sympathetic response which activates you and a parasympathetic response which slows down your functioning. The sympathetic response gives you surges of adrenaline and prepares you for action. And it's what we commonly refer to as the fight or flight response. But it's not just something that happens when you're faced with a threat. If you go on a brisk walk, your sympathetic nervous system kicks in and increases your heart rate to pump more blood to your muscles, and your breathing increases to take in more oxygen. If you become afraid or have an untriggered panic attack, you can get a similar increase in your sympathetic nervous system that increases your heart rate and your breathing and makes you feel ready to fight or flee. Newton's third law of motion says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So similarly, the parasympathetic nervous system is the equal and opposite reaction to the sympathetic system. The sympathetic system is the accelerator and the parasympathetic is the brakes that slows things back down to their resting state. So this is the science behind how the vagus nerve works and how it produces a relaxation response. Here are five things that you can do to stimulate your vagus nerve. Some people call these vagal maneuvers. Number one, deep breathing. Your brain via the vagus nerve controls your resting breathing rate but you can override that resting rate by slowing your breaths, holding your breaths, or hyperventilating. So you can then trigger a relaxation response by taking deep breaths in from your abdomen. And there's many kinds of deep breathing exercises that you can do, but the main goal is to override your automatic breaths with slow breaths. And a good target to aim for is anywhere from six to 10 breaths per minute. If you go with six, you're breathing in and out every 10 seconds. And you can do this by counting to five on the inhale and then five on the exhale. Number two is humming. This works because as your vagus nerve leaves your head, it passes through your neck and passes by your vocal cords. The vagus nerve also controls your vocal cords. So when you hum, you cause vibrations in your vocal cords that stimulate your vagus nerve. A variation of the humming is to make the om sound. And this is why some types of yoga and meditation practices will have you make this sound. Om. Number three is splashing cold water on your face or taking a cold shower. The sudden change in skin temperature triggers a parasympathetic response and therefore a relaxation response. If you don't like cold water on your face, like you're at work and you don't wanna mess up your makeup, you can try putting a cold compress on the back of your neck. The last one or two is what's referred to as a Valsalva maneuver. And this is often prescribed by cardiologists to their patients who need to slow their resting heart rate or their heart rate, especially for people who have like tachycardia syndromes. So you have to be cautious about using this maneuver if you have a heart problem or other serious medical illness like increased pressure inside of your head. 
If that's the case, just check with your doctor before using this maneuver. There are two forms of this. The first one is when you hold your nose and try and forcefully breathe out of your nose like you're trying to blow your nose. So you hold it or you pinch it. It's not that comfortable. This is what people will also recommend to unpop your ears after you've been on an airplane. This maneuver increases the pressure inside of your head and therefore, and it stimulates the vagus nerve through that. This maneuver is more aggressive than the breathing and the humming and the cold water on your face. It's generally used when someone has a really rapid heart rate. The second type of Valsalva maneuver is to hold your breath. That increases the pressure in your chest area. And you would also do this just for a few seconds. This is not as aggressive as blowing in, into your nose. And there are times that you need to hold your breath, like when you're swimming. People will hold their breaths to get rid of hiccups as well. Hiccups occur when you have abnormal contractions of your diaphragm. It pulls down and then quickly pulls back up and closes off your vocal cords and you hear this hick sound. We don't know exactly why people get the hiccups, but you can get more hiccups when you're under stress. Your vagus nerve and your phrenic nerve are involved in this abnormal diaphragm movement. When you hold your breath, you're trying to do a manual override with your diaphragm by not letting it move. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. These vagal stimulation maneuvers work best for anxiety that you feel physically, like heart racing, body sweating, or even feeling lightheaded. But you don't have to be in the throes of a panic attack to do them. You can do it if you're feeling tense and just want to do a reset. I find the um humming particularly useful when I want to calm myself. And that's how I look too when I do it. Um. So you might want to do this or have a little privacy when you do this. So these are some simple tools that you can have in your back pocket that you can pull out anytime you want to feel more relaxed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.